In this lecture, you'll learn the parts of the eye and their functions, as well as some disorders of the eye. In the next three slides, we'll look at the parts of the eye and their functions. The anterior cavity is the front of the eyeball and is composed of the anterior chamber and the posterior chamber. The anterior chamber is the aqueous humor-filled space inside the eye between the iris and the cornea's innermost surface. This is where glaucoma is found. The posterior chamber is the chamber directly posterior or behind the iris, but anterior to the lens. The posterior cavity is the back two-thirds of the eye that includes all of the optical structures behind it, the vitreous humor, the retina, the choroid, and the optic nerve. The cornea is your eye's clear, protective outer layer. Along with the sclera, which is the white of your eye, it serves as a barrier against dirt and germs. The iris controls the size of the pupil. The pupil is the hole in the iris. The lens helps to focus light on the retina, and the ciliary body controls the shape of the lens and produces aqueous humor. Look at the diagram on the right and make sure that you can locate all of these structures. Again, follow along the diagram as I describe the parts of the eye. The suspensory ligament connects the ciliary body and the lens, and it helps hold them in place. The vitreous body, or vitreous humor, is a clear colorless fluid that fills the space between the lens and the retina of the eye. The optic nerve is located in the back of the eye. It's also known as cranial nerve number two. The optic disc is your blind spot. This is the area where axons leave the eye, and there are no rods or cones. Blood vessels are found here as well. The fovea is a tiny pit in the retina that provides the clearest vision. The retina is a thin layer of tissue that lines the inside back of the eye. It changes light into neural signals and sends them to the brain for interpretation. The choroid is the vascular layer between the retina and the sclera. The sclera is the white of the eye. It is a protective layer that contains collagen and elastic fibers. There are a number of muscles associated with the eye. The two I'd like you to know are the inferior rectus muscle and the superior rectus muscle. The actions of the inferior rectus muscle are the adduction and medial rotation of the eyeball that allows for downward movement. The actions of the superior rectus muscle are elevation and adduction of the eyeball and medial rotation. This allows for the upward movement. Here's a diagram that you can use to practice learning the parts of the eyeball. I will post the answers in week eight material under optional resources, but I hope that you'll try and go over this and learn it first before you check the answers. We're going to look at two disorders of the eye. The first is retinal detachment and the second is glaucoma. Retinal detachment occurs when the retina is pulled away from its normal position in the back of the eye. You can see this in the diagram on the right. When detachment occurs, vision is blurred. It almost always causes blindness unless it's treated. Here you can compare normal vision with retinal detachment you can see the dark fog that occurs in a person's peripheral vision if they have retinal detachment. So who is likely to be affected by a retinal detachment? It can occur at any age, but it is more common in midlife and later. It is quite uncommon, however, and only about one person in 10,000 is affected. Very rarely, younger people can have a weakness of the retina, or it can be detached as a result of a blow to the head. The symptoms of retinal detachment are flashing lights in one eye, floaters, and a gray curtain or veil moving across your field of vision. These symptoms are not painful. Many people experience flashes or floaters, and these are not necessarily a cause for alarm. However, if they are severe and seem to be getting worse and or vision is being lost, a doctor should be seen urgently. Prompt treatment can often minimize the damage to the eye. There are certain conditions that can increase the chance of a retinal detachment. They include nearsightedness, previous cataract surgery, glaucoma, severe trauma, 
previous retinal detachment in your other eye, a family history of retinal detachment, and weak areas in your retina seen by your ophthalmologist. If the detachment is caught early enough, the usual treatment is either laser or freezing treatment performed under a local anesthetic. Often, however, an operation to repair the hole in the retina is necessary and that would be done under a general anesthetic. Usually there's no pain and the person stays in the hospital two to three days afterward, mostly to be sure that they do not bump their head and detach the retina again. There's always a risk with any surgery. However, if the detached retina is left untreated, it will usually result in permanent severe vision loss or blindness. Some of these surgical risks include infection, bleeding, high pressure inside the eye, or cataracts. Most retinal detachment surgery is successful, although a second operation is sometimes needed. If the retina cannot be reattached, the eye will continue to lose sight and ultimately become blind. It may take several months for a person's vision to improve after retinal detachment surgery, and in some cases, their vision may never fully return. Unfortunately, some patients, especially those with chronic retinal detachment, do not recover any vision. The more severe the detachment, the longer it has been present, and the less vision may be expected to return. For this reason, it's very important to see your ophthalmologist at the first sign of trouble. Glaucoma is a group of eye conditions that damage the optic nerve. It's important to have a healthy optic nerve to have good vision. This damage is often caused by an abnormally high pressure in your eye. Glaucoma is one of the leading causes of blindness for people over the age of 60. That's why it's so important to have annual checkups with an ophthalmologist. Look at a healthy eye versus an eye with glaucoma. In the eye with glaucoma, you can see an outward movement indicating that there's pressure inside the eyeball. Remember I mentioned before that glaucoma develops in the anterior chamber of the anterior cavity of the eyeball. 